I remember standing on a stage in a school cafeteria in 1987 with all my third grade classmates, and the fear was overwhelming. Our teacher was reading words out loud like neither, elsewhere, and elbow. Most of the students breezed right through it, but I was trembling. Finally, it was my turn, and the word was cat. I remember my classmate behind me. He said, cat, that's so easy, but for me it was not. Earlier that year, I was diagnosed with a processing disorder, which made reading, writing, and math incredibly challenging. The ability to process words like my peers was out of my reach. And that day, I felt like an invisible wall stood between me and my peers on the stage. The embarrassment crushed me and I fled to the bathroom where I vomited. My mom followed me with a worried look on her face. For years, I hid my disability. I did not ask for help and I kept my struggles to myself. It took a lifetime to unlearn those bad habits. After several years of many failed jobs, I realized my true career did not exist. So I built my own business. What I could not learn in books, I was going to learn through action. Along the way, I discovered many approaches, but the one that stuck out to me the most was temperament theory. It was the ability to understand behavior and personality. And when you understand personality, you know what motivates you and what your strengths are. You know, I look back on that spelling competition, the crushing feelings I felt of embarrassment, my mom's feelings of failure, and I realized there was a greater challenge that existed. So I wanted to take what I knew, because my story was not unique. There are many children with learning disabilities with similar stories as mine. So I put everything I knew together, and I wanted to help them. By doing this, I collaborated with two experts in temperament theory to create an assessment tool that helped them understand the child's strengths or it helped them to see their temperament and, or other words, their personality profile by using illustrations that represented the four temperaments, curious, kind, playful, and responsible. Each set of temperament each set of illustrations represented each temperament, but each t illustration also had a specific trait that was tailored within that temperament. For example, a curious child values their intellect and wants to be praised for their creative ideas. And a playful child is a performer, and they want to be liked by their friends, and they love competition. But a kind child values emotional connection and they want those hugs and also validation where the responsible child loves order and wants to be told they're well behaved this tool was designed to aid children parents and their teachers to focus on the inherited strengths rather than the perceived shortcomings when you know the child's temperament it helps you to personalize a plan for them when the school system is now moving towards a more strength-based approach. And they're adding in their IEPs, which is an individual education plan, more of their interests or strengths. And they're doing more strength-based teaching research for these students. For one instance, there was a facilitator that used this diagnostic tool to help a child that was nonverbal and diagnosed with autism. During the assessment, they, he recognized the playful characters. The, the facilitator then tailored this program towards the playful temperament. She then created activities like competitive games and performing in front of the crowd. He was thrilled and more engaged. When you take time to understand children with learning disabilities, you know what their strengths are, and it empowers them. It also helps when we acknowledge their temperamental differences. This will help enrich this process and empower them even more. So as someone with a learning disability, I feel knowing your strengths is crucial. It is so important, it's, it shatters the stigma that comes with a disability. It helps you focus on your strengths 
and see the potential rather than the shortcomings. Life has a poetic way to come back to where you started. As a third grader, I stood on a stage with, trembling with fear and embarrassment, be, knowing the chasm between me and my peers. And I realized the stage became an identity of my in inadequacies, a spotlight for my disability to be seen by all. Fast forward today, and I hear again on a stage, I still have my disability, but I do not let it define me anymore. If I can go back to 1987, I would tell my younger self, you are capable of much more. But most importantly, I tell my mother that her love and care made me who I was. If you are a person with a disability, a parent or a teacher with a child with one, remember this. It is not about the words you cannot spell, but the stories you overcome. Thank you.